Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Well, we got bad news this week that the unemployment rate went up to 4.1%. So what did the stock market do with this bad news? It made all time new records, of course. <laughs> I've been predicting for the last year that the Federal Reserve was going to cut rates in September and it looks like they're well on course to do so. And they're doing it because of the bad news of the unemployment rate increasing. Now there is a SAM rule, S-A-H-M rule of predicting recessions and it relies on the moving three month average of the unemployment rate. If that three month average of the unemployment rate goes significantly up, uh, exactly 0.5% above what the lowest point has been in the previous 12 months, then that's an indication that we're either in a recession or we're going to be there soon. I think I keep it simple in my own mind. In my own mind, I'm going, I'm going to say for myself, that if we hit four and a half percent unemployment, it's time to think recession. I don't think the Federal Reserve is ever cutting rates to zero again. I, I think that was the fantasy of people buying bonds early on, that the Fed would eventually cut to zero. If they cut to zero now, it will be because of a national tragedy in the stock market and in the economy in general and that'll be a tragedy that you don't want to see. I think they will cut rates eventually down to like 3%, but that won't happen until 2025 or 2026. And this is what we're dealing with because they have to keep some control on inflation, but inflation is not the main worry. Stocks can do well and companies can go forward in an inflationary background. They cannot go forward in a recession. And so the Federal Reserve is more or less committed that they're not going to let recessions happen, especially in an election year. Artificial intelligence is the game right now. I think it's the only game in many ways. There's many stocks that are just suffering, especially the smaller stocks are being told to, to buy right now. But small stocks and bonds won't start to benefit until the Fed actually cuts rates. So hopefully at the next uh, FOMC meeting, the Federal Reserve meeting, where they decide rates, Hopefully at that time, I don't think they're going to cut rates uh, at the next meeting. It will be in the meeting after that in September. I think if you're thinking of buying bonds and you want to risk it, I would say early September is probably the time to do it. The same for small stocks. Right now, the artificial intelligence stocks and the big stocks who have hordes of money are benefiting from inflation because they get interest on the big cash buildup that they possess. Small companies are hurt by inflation, but I think they will benefit once rates start being cut. So if you're wanting to invest in small stocks, I think it's the same thing. Only I don't think it's going to be as quick as with bonds. I think uh, bonds will benefit quickly from them starting to cut rates. But I think small cap stocks, they'll benefit eventually from them cutting rates. But they've been put down so bad that I think it's going to take them some time to recover. The star of the week was clearly Tesla. And God knows why it was the star. There was no really big news, but there's people who buy into the legend of Tesla. And it's hard not to get seduced by it with the robots, the robo taxis that are supposedly coming. And, and it is improving. I can see it in my car that it drives significantly better on, on the self-driving feature than it used to. So there is plenty of reason to be optimistic with Tesla, especially the energy storage business. Musk once predicted that their energy storage business would be more significant than their car business, which is hard to believe. 
but it is starting to deliver results, and they think it soon will be adding a billion profit to the bottom line of Tesla. And looking at the chart, for the last month, Tesla has gone up about 43%, but 27% of that was done in the last week, where it went up from about 200 to over $250. Wow. Of course, it is overbought right now. Its relative strength is 85, indicating that it is overbought. And it's left its 50-day moving average in the dust. So it's hard to know what's going to propel it further onward unless the general market just keeps going up like this. I think we're likely to see a correction down at least somewhat to like 230 or something is my guess. I bet you can't name the best performing stock in the Dow Industrial Average. Believe it or not, it's Amazon. It finally broke the big $200 barrier. Looking at the one month chart, you can see that Amazon landed exactly on 200 and it made 11% for the month. What a stock, what a stock, what a stock. It's a keeper. Its relative strength is only 66. It's probably underbought. Amazon is well above its 50-day moving average of about 185. And then we have the age-old question, is Google, that internet giant that's now hitting an all-time high, is it now a buy or a sell? To be or not to be, that is the question. Looking at the chart, you can see Google has left its 50-day moving average in the dust, and it's now at 190. It's made almost 10% for the month, and its relative strength is 73, which is good. So I expect this stock to keep moving forward. And good old Apple, this $3 trillion stock has finally broken out and is in the 220s. It spent the longest time in the 180 to the 190s. It spent the longest time there, but it finally has broken out. Looking at the chart, you can see that Apple has left its 50-day moving average in the dust, and it's and now at 226. Again, it was down around 195. And it's made about 16%, over 16% in the last month. Its relative strength is 75, so it's still a buy. Microsoft might be my favorite stock in many ways, just because it might be the most important uh, artificial intelligence stocks uh, with its 49% stake in open AI. It probably will be one of the first to participate with open AI in generalized artificial intelligence. And looking at the chart, you can see that Microsoft has continued its nice steady march higher. That's part of the reason I like it is the way it moves. It doesn't drive me crazy. It just kind of keeps going up. <laughs> You've got to love a stock like that. It's now at 467 and its relative strength is 76, which is good. Microsoft has made over 12% in the last month. And the stock that's hard for me to look at is Meta, M-E-T-A, which I should have bought it when it was Facebook. And every time I look at this stock, and now the price is verging on $540, there's lots of regrets that storm through my system. And looking at the chart, you can see that Meta, like all the other Magnificent Seven, has left its 50-day moving average in the dust. And its relative strength is 71, uh, which is still good. And it's trying to get to 600, I think, sometime. Uh, in this political year where there's so much political advertising, it just might do it. And NVIDIA, NVDA, is sort of just hanging out at 125 after it's split. And I don't expect this stock really to advance significantly until we approach earnings, which do not occur until August 21st. So I, I think the other Magnificent Seven are more or less catching up to it because NVIDIA's made 154% since the beginning of the year. 
And looking at the chart, you can see NVIDIA is just holding around 125. It's still made 8% so far in the last month, but it's, it's kind of hanging out. And I think it's waiting for the next earnings to come out, as everybody else is. And I think the other Magnificent Seven are just trying to catch up to it. Uh, it's uh, well above its 50-day moving average, and it's 154% since the beginning of the year. Really can't be matched. The good news is is that its relative strength is 57, and so it's almost underbought. So I think if it suddenly jumped above 130, I might be tempted to buy it. But I'm holding off on that temptation for now. And last but not least is the Round Hill Magnificent 7 ETF. I love this stock because all it owns is the seven Magnificent 7 <laughs> stocks. So it allows me to get in and out quickly. And I think we are on this perilous road of are we in a recession? Are we not in a recession? Are we going into one? Are we pulling out of one? Uh, you know, it's very doubtful. And the election uh, has really thrown this into more confusion. Economically, I'm not that worried about the election because whoever uh, b becomes president will be a big spender. Of the three, Joe Biden, Donald Trump, and Kamala Harris, all three will be big spenders to keep the party going. <laughs> because inflation, it's, it's a worry, but it's nowhere near the worry that recession is, and they're going to keep the party going. Looking at the chart, uh, you can see uh, Megs has made about 14% in the last month. I also put QQQ in there so you could compare the two. The difference between them is the QQQ includes the Magnificent Seven, but it also has 93 smaller companies after it. And I think those 93 smaller companies actually drag it down. The QQQ is the 100 largest uh, companies on the NASDAQ. So it necessarily has 93 smaller companies, which I think drag it down. And I think that's why MAGS, M-A-G-S, uh, is outperforming it by a factor of two. So I plan to, to keep on keeping on. It is a perilous stock market because we have the threat of recession. I'm not worried about inflation. If inflation takes off, they know what to do to damp it down. There's every sign that they're, they want to cut in September for many reasons. That's the way I roll. Thank you.